My contribution to internet history has been very much in the European context. I was responsible for building the first pan-European research internet as part of a project which started in the early 1990s. And at the time I thought this was just another job. I'd been brought in as a hired gun, as it were, to run this project and I thought that would be over. But the project built a network, and that network exists today in, in, in a different form. And the network then really required an organisation to support and run it. And so we established Dante, which is my current employer, in 1993. Dante is responsible for the Pan-European Research Internet today. And the Pan-European Research Internet covers basically the whole of Western and Eastern Europe in footprint and has uh, associated with it all the researchers and universities across Europe. So it is a very powerful experimental tool as far as the internet is concerned. Well, there was one really very big highlight, and, and that was going back to 1991. Uh, there was the sort of quarrel that engineers, only engineers can have with one another about the sort of technology that should be used to build the pan-European network at the time. And there were two contenders, and, and in a sense it's almost a, a big Indian versus a little Indian argument as to which way you should go. Uh, and there was a tremendous uh, war almost between the different groups in Europe, and it was known actually as the Protocol Wars. And I had the issue that I couldn't please both sides, or at least I didn't think I could please both sides. But I found a solution with, based on internet technology that allowed all the existing work to continue and provided a migration path to a pure internet solution. And that really was the highlight, was the, the, the ability to break down this quarrel, as it were, and, and really provide a path where everybody could cooperate on, on an internet-based solution. And, and going back to the early 1990s, there was another very big challenge, and that was the monopolistic environment, certainly in Europe, surrounding the provision of telecommunications. And so in practice, every country had its own national monopoly. And those monopolies could or could not choose whether they were going to cooperate with you. It meant that in the monopolistic environment, prices were very high. Uh, access to uh, network capacity and network capabilities was quite restricted. It was rationed almost. And that was the other battle that we had to fight to establish uh, the European Research Internet. And that was a much more political battle, it was a lobbying battle. Uh, we, along with a lot of other people, pressed the European Commission to open up the European telecommunications market. And gradually that happened, and by 1998 uh, there was liberalisation of the telecommunications market in Europe. That had a tremendous effect on what we did and the way we did it. So, for example, uh, prior to 1998, there was no way we'd ever get access to our own fibre optic network. And that major change meant that we were unconstrained by uh, the restrictions which, which, which uh, basically a monopolised environment uh, forces on you. That was a very, very big breakthrough as well. And I think that was the other really major challenge which one had. You know, had the challenge of getting the engineers to cooperate. You also had the challenge of fighting against a political environment in telecommunications which was restrictive. There, as I, as I, I indicated before, there was a certain tension in, in, in Europe between the different engineering factions. And, and by proposing a compromise solution, I, I wasn't uniformly popular with, 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 with either camp, really. And I remember making a presentation in, in, in Tokyo and, and the, at the back of the room, there was somebody making obscene gestures at me. And it was the only time in my life when I've presented anything have I had an audience participation of that sort. And it was a most peculiar experience and very off-putting. And afterwards, he explained to me that I was destroying one of the camps, which was basically what, what Europe had divided into. So that was a really curious experience to find. But you give presentations, these days too many people are busy looking at their emails on laptops, but to have that sort of audience participation when somebody's standing at the back of the room making obscene gestures at you was really, was about, was really quite amusing. I had intended originally to just do this project job for three years and then go on to do other things. I hadn't really worked out what those other things were going to be, 
but my working assumption was that I would move on to a different world, move back really to a more commercial world, which is where I came from. And in fact, I didn't. I stayed put. I moved from running the project to running the Dante, the organisation that, that, that supports the Pan-European Research Internet today. And that was a very, very big change. It wasn't something I'd expected. And it's meant that I've spent 20 years living in Cambridge, uh, basically working in the research and education environment. That was not a career option I expected. Uh, it was one I eventually chose, but, but it wasn't. It was a bit of a surprise to me that, that I stayed with it, as it were. And I think it's a tribute to the excitement and the challenge of working with the internet, that that was something that was a very obvious thing to do.